Hello, friends. Dmitry Mikhailov, or Izida, is here. We have a special episode today. You've been asking about this for a while, and the time has come to talk a little about it. Throttle and flaps, how to use them correctly and in which situations. The first experiments with flaps took place in England before World War I. Millionaire and aviation enthusiast Tereshenka worked on similar experiments in Russia. In the 1930s, the world of aviation began to make use of so-called Fowler flaps. This invention's unique feature was that the flap moved out from the wing, generating increased lift not only due to increasing the wing's camber, but also by increasing its surface area. As a result of this improvement, the wing's lifting properties became noticeably more effective than when other forms of landing flaps were used. In simple terms, when the flaps are extended, the wing's surface area increases. The wing's lifting ability also increases. This allows the aircraft to fly at a lower speed without stalling. Granted, aerodynamic resistance also increases, or drag as it is known technically, which causes a reduction in speed. Let's take a look at the simplest application of this. There are three simplified flap extension modes in the game. Combat, takeoff, and landing. Flaps are useful for attacking ground targets at low speeds. If you're in a ground attack aircraft, for example, you can reduce your throttle a little, extend your flaps into combat or takeoff mode, and attack the target at a leisurely pace, after which you can retract your flaps, throttle up to full, and get ready for a second approach. Now let's take a look at various combat situations in fighters. The correct use of flaps during a horizontal sharp turn. As you can see, the Yak-9T is pursuing a Messerschmitt which has gathered a decent amount of speed. We don't yet have quite enough energy to achieve a good fire position on it. Our speed isn't too high or too low, which allows us to extend our flaps to takeoff mode and turn sharply towards our opponent. But, I repeat, this action will reduce our speed. A situation may arise in which our speed falls too low and we begin to stall. This will force us to correct our aircraft, allowing our opponent to catch up to us in turn by utilizing our loss of speed. In conclusion, when performing a horizontal maneuver, you shouldn't extend your flaps at low speeds. Additionally, it's only worth extending them if you're sure you can turn directly towards your opponent. Otherwise, it's highly probable that you'll swap positions with your opponent. Now, let's move on to the correct use of flaps in vertical maneuvers. Let's take a look at this situation. We have two fighters after us, a Hellcat and a Spitfire, both at a higher altitude. I see that they're using boom and zoom tactics on me. Well, okay, we'll use some maneuvering engagement tactics. We pull them down and accelerate the aircraft to around 600 kilometers per hour. Then we pull back the stick and wait for our opponent to level out with us. Then we start a rising spiral. Our opponent won't be able to turn all the way towards us owing to the high speed of his boom and zoom tactics. We extend our flaps to landing mode. Our flaps slow us down a little and help us pass our opponent. We don't touch our throttle. We're pulling up and hence quickly losing speed. Now, we quickly shut off our throttle. We didn't have quite enough here. We don't put on any throttle for now. First, we wait for the plane to drop in landing mode, give it some throttle to raise the nose while quickly reducing it again. Using our landing flaps at low speeds helped us stay at a higher altitude than our opponent. We used the throttle just a little to correct our course for attack. Now let's look at another vertical maneuvering situation. We try to shoot head on and then veer off to the side. We change trajectory several times to avoid the Cobra's potential attacks. In this battle of two opponents, we have a small advantage in speed. So before we start combat maneuvering, we'll make use of our surplus energy. In the meantime, the Hellcat has turned and is chasing us. We keep rolling the plane, left and right, but our main goal is to make our angle of ascent sharper, to encourage our enemy, who started out with less energy, to stall. The plane's nose has started to drop, meaning it's stalling. We extend our takeoff flaps and drop our throttle to make our nose drop faster. Then we put on some throttle to bear down on our opponent. And he's toast. Now, we quickly retract our flaps and put on maximum throttle to escape from the attack of the second enemy. I want to draw your attention to one point. Some pilots who recommend only boom and zoom tactics advise you, for some reason, to release your flaps when your plane is dropping and retract them when the plane's nose raises. That's absolutely incorrect. 
When you're diving, you need to gain speed ASAP for your next maneuver, which means you shouldn't be using your flaps. This is basic air combat maneuvering knowledge. Let's move on to the next situation. Here is a demonstration of a passing attempt during a lower vertical maneuver with the help of a descending spiral. Our flaps are in landing mode and the throttle is off. The plane is gathering speed on its own. If the pass isn't successful before reaching the ground, it'll all end, either with both banking into combat or going our separate ways. And finally, I'll show you a standard battle in which I comment on the use of flaps and throttle in one situation or another. Let's go! The Corsair flies by underneath us at the same speed. During our turn, we don't use our flaps because we began to turn before our opponent, so we'll open fire sooner. We want to save our speed. Unfortunately, our attack isn't successful, so we start to angle our nose down and open our takeoff flaps. We retract them almost immediately to slightly cut off our angle and open fire. Now we have no need of our flaps. We calmly estimate the ballistics of our shell's flight and fire a single shot. Now we see an incoming P-400 from above. We don't bother with a split-S maneuver in this situation as it would be useless. We just head straight up, after which we immediately pitch and break our trajectory. A King Cobra has just arrived and is also attempting to attack us. Now that our speed is over 400, we can pull up and attempt to attack our opponent. The Cobra passes below us. We try to turn towards it and at the same time gather speed because we're a little higher up. The King Cobra flies upwards, and we can safely chase it because there are no enemies close by. We don't use our flaps, otherwise we'll lose our already low speed. Oh, an Air Cobra appears. We dive to gain speed, again without using our flaps, as we need our speed for maneuvering. It turns back to attack us. Now, gaining a speed of around 400, we pull in the stick, extend our takeoff flaps, and pitch. Let's counterattack this Cobra. We ease back on the throttle and immediately put it back on, retract our flaps, and attack the Cobra, which is turning back and gaining height. We fly down a little to gain speed, at the same time looking around for a new target. We see a P-400 and begin a chandelle. Now, we just need to fly after the P-400. Our opponent is chasing an allied Yak-9T. We're following him, but our speed is too low. Unfortunately, we miss a few times and our opponent escapes upwards. We stop turning toward him, constantly just missing. We pitch after him without using our flaps, because our speed is low enough as it is, and only after our nose has dropped, we go into landing mode and turn towards our target. So, we retract our flaps as our opponent levels out with us and shoot him down. Later, we tackle a couple of more enemy fighters. But as far as the topic of flaps and throttle is concerned, there's nothing new in these engagements. In summary, I've shown you the correct use of flaps and throttle to effectively engage your opponent. In addition to a few interesting maneuvers to evade boom and zoom attacks, pass the enemy, and counterattack him. Remember to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and interesting. Discover new aerial horizons, learn more and don't limit yourself to boom and zoom and flybys. The flight school is far richer and you'll find yourself in entirely different situations. This was Dmitry Mikhailov or Azida. Until next time in the War Thunder Skies and good luck!